Samuel reached out to me from Israel uh, yesterday. He's having some difficulties, and I appreciate the honesty because we're all there at some point. Samuel is having some difficulties with this whole concept of perfectionism in sales, trying to be perfect, beating yourself up, trying to really, really focus and be perfect, perfect, perfect. So I wanna talk a little bit before we get started about managing perfectionism in sales. Perfectionism in sales, it will either make you or break you. So who wants to unmute themselves? What is, if we just had to come up with a quick definition, somebody rapid fire, unmute yourself. What is perfectionism in sales? Perfectionism will make you or break you. What is it in sales? I think always trying to be right about everything. Always trying to be right about everything. Anyone else? It's just overthinking things. So you're actually procrastinating and not focusing on the task. Over be so perfect that you're just misguided. Yes, overthinking things. How does perfectionism hurt us in our sales career? Psyching yourself out. Psyching. Always overthinking things. Psyching yourself out, overthinking things. Slowing things down. S slowing things, slowing things down. Yes. How else does perfectionism in sales hurt us? It stops your progress. Stops your progress. I agree. You're, you're focused so much on being perfect, you don't get anything done. Um, now here's another question though. How does perfectionism in sales help us? Could it help us? How does it help us? Anyone want to take a stab at that? It allows you to create systems. Allows you to create systems. I love it. Ability to separate yourself from your competitors. Ability to separate, yes, ability to separate yourself from your competitors. We're in a phase right now in our society where, I'll throw around some buzzwords, imposter syndrome, right? And it's like, everybody's all gotten really freaked out about, oh, I don't wanna try and be too perfect. Maybe that's a scam, right? Maybe we could all use a little bit improving our process, getting better, right? So I think perfectionism, it's a two-way street. Yes, it can slow us down. Yes, it can hurt us, but it can also help us. We're looking at perfectionism the wrong way, okay? So I wanna talk for a quick second about how we can address perfectionism because we all have it to some degree. I hope you do. I don't think you're on EastonUniversity.com if you're not trying to get better. And if you're not trying to get better, you're drifting into the lane of perfectionism in a good way, not a bad way. But let me address perfectionism sales and, and see if I can recalibrate our mindset a little bit. First off, if you wanna manage perfectionism in sales, the number one thing you have to do, well, the first thing you have to do is get sold and clear on your value, not sold and clear on your product, not sold and clear on your promotions, not sold and clear on your freaking comp plan and how much money you're gonna make if you do 147% of plan this quarter. Sold and clear on your value, about what you bring to the world in terms of your product, solution, and yourself. Might be a good idea to ruminate about that over the next couple days. What is the value that I bring to the world and what is the value I'm capable of bringing to the world? Get sold and clear on that, okay? Now, here's the other thing I need you to realize. If you tend to be a perfectionist, you need to get rid of that noise right here, right now because I'm the only sales coach that has ever talked about this and probably will over talk about it until people start stealing my stuff, okay? Perfectionism is a one-way street. To be perfect in sales means you are the one doing all the talking, okay? That is not sales. That is marketing. If you wanna quit your job and work in the marketing department, be my guest. But if you wanna try and get perfect copy, perfect speak, have the perfect tempo within 29.5 seconds with all the perfect colors, that's marketing. Go work in that department. That's not sales. Perfectionism in relationships, not a good thing to strive for because the other person has to talk. And if we're getting frustrated because things aren't perfect, that means we're getting frustrated at them. And if we're getting frustrated at our clients and our prospects, that's not a good deal, okay? If you're striving to be perfection, if you're striving to be perfect, you're striving to have the perfect pitch. Ditch the freaking pitch and start having better conversations, not perfect pitches. 
All right, here's the other thing I need you to realize. I want you to be a perfectionist, but I want you to major in the majors and not major in the minors. Okay, here's where we get for, oh man, that voicemail wasn't perfect. Oh man, I studied 15 different, well I teach one way to close, but I studied all these closing techniques and all these tricks and gimmicks from these other crappy sales coaches and I just clearly can't deliver it perfectly. If you're focused on the little things, your spelling in your uh, emails, how you left that voicemail, I want you to strive to be better. Sure, I'd like you to have less spelling errors, but focus on the majors. Get perfect on the majors. What are the majors? Here are the majors. Number one, what do I want that other person to know and feel about the current situation? Now the current situation is not my product, my solution, my price, me, my special. You need to figure out, the biggest major you need to figure out is what the hell is going on with the current situation. For me in sales coaching, there's a lot of salespeople that are really frustrated right now and their sales have either plateaued or gone down and it's not their fault. It's not their comp plan, it's not their competition, it's not their manager, it's not the marketplace, it's not interest rates, it's the fact that customers have too much information right now and they've got too many choices. So the old school way of selling, it's not working anymore. Right, just pitching to somebody doesn't work anymore. Their phone is pitching to them 24 seven. Right, I wanna make sure if I'm talking to somebody that they're aware of that because that's the current situation in the marketplace. What have I said about myself? Zero. I'm letting them know what the hell is going on. Figure out what the hell is going on in terms of your product, your solution, your world, your business, not a sales pitch, okay? How is that letting them know going to be helpful to them. If I told you what I just told you about sales and you weren't already on Eastern University, you'd be like, wait a minute, that actually makes a lot of sense. Maybe that's why nobody's calling me back. Maybe that's why these meetings aren't going well. It's going to be a helpful thing, me letting you know that that's what's going on in the marketplace, whether you do business with me or not. Okay? Number two that you want to focus on, major. Okay? Major. Focus on this. Every damn conversation. Have they told me, have they from this area of their face told me what is going on in terms of their current situation, where they're at right now, and where they wanna be. And can I feel it? Not, hey, yeah, we're, we're making 10 million right now, we wanna get to five. Can I feel that, right? When you say you're at, uh, well, five million now and you wanna get to 10. When you say you're at five right now and you wanna get to 10, talk to me about what's going on, right? Can I really feel it? Have they really communicated to me in a way where I can feel the how, the what, the why of their current situation, where they're at right now, and where they want to be. That's the number two major, okay? Number three major, what do I want that other person to know and feel about how I can help them? What do I want them to know and feel about how I can help them, okay? And the, fa the last major here, the fourth major, Okay, have I made a recommendation based on what they told me? Samuel, based on what you're telling me, um, this is exactly what we're seeing with a lot of sales reps that are in your space. They're having difficulty selling meetings. They're having difficulties closing the deal. Um, based on everything you're telling me, you're a perfect fit for Easton University. Does it make sense to get you on board, right? You're having a good conversation and you're focusing on these four things, okay? What do I want the other person to know and feel about the situation? What's going on in the world? Okay, have has that other person told me about their current situation? Where they're at right now, where do they wanna be? Can I feel it? Do I feel like we've just transferred some information between each other? At this point, I've told them nothing about myself. And then number three, what do I want that person to know and feel about how I can help them, right? Based on everything you told me, I'd like to recommend bop, 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 bop. And have I made sure that I've made that recommendation based on what they've told me? When you focus on those four majors, all the little things, your tonality, how you screwed up in that email, how you forgot to call somebody back, will work themselves out. 
Okay, get perfect on those four things. Get comfortable with those four things. Get to where you're going to always accomplish those four things in every conversation and you don't have to worry about being perfect about anything else. Your sales will skyrocket because your competition is worried about sending the perfect email with the perfect title, with the perfect ad copy, with the perfect pitch, with the perfect offer, with the perfect price, with the perfect promotion, with the perfect white paper attached. And that's not sales, that's marketing. And if marketing could sell your product, solution, or service on its own, they would. There's a lot of industries out there that don't need or have salespeople. They have websites, okay? Amazon, well, at least with their consumer division, they don't need us because they've got the perfect marketing, they've got the perfect way of communicating. All the rest of us that operate in a more complex business world need us. But we have to focus on how are we perfect in terms of getting that person's attention, letting them know what's going on in the world, having them tell us where they're at right now, where do they want to be? How can we know and feel where they're at right now, where do they want to be? How can they know and feel how we can help them? And have we made a recommendation based on what they've told us? When you can focus on those four things, you don't have to be perfect at anything else.